I would go crazy if I didn't talk to him every day. But he's faithful because he talks to me too. I can hear his voice. You know, even, even Jesus said in the Bible, my sheep know my voice and they hear my voice. They run away from the voice they don't recognize. They run away from the stranger. And it's the same thing here. You know, if it's another voice that I don't recognize, uh, usually I just tend to steer clear from it. And that's what's really helped me out in my walk with God. I asked God for the discernment of spirits and He gave me the discernment of spirits. That's why I'm, I'm personally able to distinguish when it's God talking and when it's not God talking. Through a person in general, you know, I can discern and I can perceive those things. And it's just a matter of asking. Because when you ask Him, He'll give it to you. And it's really simple. We don't have to really try hard to distinguish His voice. He lets you know. He lets you know when it's Him and when it's not Him. And sometimes it might take time to, to be able to learn that voice. It's like if you're getting to know somebody. You're not going to get to know that person right away. It takes time and sometimes you go through fire with that person and you get to know them more profoundly and even, and even love that person because they're with you through the worst times. And that's what it's been like with me and God. He's taken me through fire and He's never left me. He's been with me the entire time. And I can say that there's been times where I haven't been aware of Him. But I can say with confidence that He's never left my side. And I know that. Which is why... Which is why I can say that I'm very confident in my relationship with Him. And I know that He hears me. All it does take is, is faith in Him and you got to believe in Him. It's very simple. Jesus said, if we have faith in Him, He'll make Himself real to us. And that's how it's been. Test His word, it's true. I've had faith in Him and He's made Himself real to me. At the end of the day, that's just my personal relationship with Him. And that's what He desires with humanity. But, I mean, it's, it's real sad. Sometimes we see humanity that... They just love the world more than they do Him. You know, they love the things of the world more than they do Him. And it's going to sound strong, but it's true. The world just love. I mean, let, let me rephrase it. Not the world. The world will be the world. But humanity just loves fornicating with the world. They love it so much to where they don't they give God a chance and they know they've tasted His glory. They've tasted His presence. They've been in the presence of God. But at the end of the day, and I get it, the Word of God says that we all fall short of the glory of God. But some people, sad to say, they just love falling. <laughs> they, they just love it. You know, they excuse it as in a way of like, they want to pursue that. And that's, that's a sad thing, you know. <coughs> and hear my heart on this, like, oh, there's a lot of flies out here. Well, they're little fruit flies. It's kind of humid over here. And hear me out on this. Uh... I'm very passionate about God. And to some, you know, uh, I preach strongly because it's, it's out of my love for God. And I'm also trying to watch out for them, but I've, I've realized that, sad to say, and most of them are believers. I'm not saying most believers, I'm saying most of the people that I've ministered to are believers. And sad to say, they, 
they just, they, um, well, they don't want to be helped. But I'm saying, like, if God brings them a genuine word and it's from God himself, because I know God speaks through me, they don't want it. It's that pride within themselves. And it's a sad thing, and it's something that I've personally seen very common. They just love the world more than they do Him. If they loved Him, they'd receive the Word. They'd welcome His Word, but they don't. Honestly, it's, it's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking because I, I see them just fade away and they go back into the world you know like Jesus said the seed that's planted on fertile ground is the one that grows and produces fruit but there is some seed that the bird comes and swoops away or the seed that is choked out by the thorns which are the troubles and the cares of life it's in the parable of the sower he said it I'm telling you this stuff's real all that is a true story Although it was a parable, because God said it Himself, it's it's true, and that's the way things are. And He said the road will be narrow, and indeed the road is narrow. It's not going to be an easy walk. Now it's not to boast about my works at all, but everything that I've had to carry, I just surrender it to Him. What I do carry though is my cross. But because my hands are so busy carrying the cross, my own cross, because Jesus said, deny yourself, pick up your cross and follow me. So my hands are too busy picking up that cross and it's so heavy. Now I'm not going to boast my own strength. My bad. Let me rephrase it. Because Jesus also said, give me your burden and take my yoke for my yoke is light. But still, man, you know, uh, being on my cross. But even then, I don't want to boast in my own works of the flesh. It's all been Him. The one that actually formed the relationship was Him. I just really seek Him out. That's the only thing I do. I seek Him out. He does say to seek Him out and He'll be found. And it's very easy. Seek Him out. But sometimes people get so desperate. They're like, well, I've seeked you for 20 minutes and you didn't show up. So I guess I'll go on home my day. But it's not like that. Because when it's just like a 20 minute seek and then you forget about him, then it wasn't genuine. It's genuine when you're constantly thinking about him. Throughout your day, you're like, God, where are you? Like, God, are you, are you in this? Are you not in that? Like, you're constantly thinking about him. And you're constantly hoping to see manifestation of God. You're constantly awaiting a new move from God. You're constantly waiting on direction. You're constantly waiting on, on God, what's next? What do you want me to do? Or God, I want to see you. I want to see you move in this. I want to see you move in that. Like that's what it means to seek out God. When you genuinely seek Him in everything you do. Not just like, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to look for Him for five minutes. And if, and if He doesn't show up, well, I give Him time and, you know, time's up. It's not like that. God sees that. God's not, a gold, God, God's not into gold diggers. I'll tell you that. And I, I used to think that way before I gave Him my life for real. Most of my life I grew up as a Christian and I gave God like, oh, okay, God, you know, maybe like five minutes, I'll, I'll look for you. And then after that, I, I would get distracted by the cares of this world and distractions and I, I would forget about God for days, to be honest. But now I can't live <laughs> at least like seconds without thinking about God. I'm going to roll with you like he's my IV. Like I need him. I need him in order for, for survival, you know. Can't, can't live without him I don't get how people live without him you know it's it's very sad I'm just like well what what is your joy like do you really put your joy in material things like I, I just asked myself that question because I mean um, I've been blessed to where I can say that I've had quite a bit and I can also say that I've had like Paul like Paul said I've had much and I've had little and honestly the only thing that's ever fulfilled me is, is God the presence of God and just talking to Him and just knowing that He hears me. I've seen miraculous things happen. 
when I pray, within five minutes, something just happens and I'm just like, God, I know that was you. I know 100% that was you. I'm not talking about like as in like a genie, but when, you for, when you're for real with him and when you're genuine with God, he, he notices and he knows. Just tell him everything. Tell him everything. You know, don't hide anything from him. Don't feel ashamed. That's what he wants. He wants genuine connection. He wants, he wants you to be real with him. And God can know. God does know when you are real with him or not. Don't hold up your guard when it comes to God. Let your guard down when it comes to God. As in like unwind before him. I'm, I'm talking about spiritually. <clears throat> but it's like that, you know. Every day he's... And sometimes I, there, there are times where I'm like, God, I, I didn't hear you today or I didn't feel you. But then he goes on to reassure me. I, I just feel it in my spirit, you know. And during those times, he's like, I've never left you. I've never left you. And there are times where I do feel, I'm like, God, uh, <coughs> I do feel like you left me. You know, like, I, I didn't see you today. I didn't, I didn't, uh, I didn't feel you today. And that's how I pray. I'm not even kidding. Like that's that's how I pray legit. I'm like, God, I didn't I didn't feel you today. Like, are you still with me? And even though his word does say, I will never leave you to the end of the age. I, I still tell God, I'm like, God, I know your word says that, but I, I didn't feel you. You know? Like soy necio, pero soy necio con Dios nomás, you know, like. Like right now, <laughs> he's he's with me right now. You, you know, even before starting this uh, video, as I was talking to God, I was I was in prayer, and that fresh wind just came over, and I I, I knew it was God. I know that this is God ordained. Yeah, I mean it's just being real with Him, being sincere, seeking Him out. And this is a sad thing, you know. Uh, don't be a gold digger when it comes to God. As in like, it's... some. Sometimes people have this loose footing of when they ask God for something, they get it, and then they they forget about God. That, that does happen. And people say, I won't do that, God, I promise. You're going to do it. You're going to do it because they're not... Um, they're not firmly grounded in Him. Their house is built on sand and they get distracted and sometimes there's seeds that are planted but the seeds get choked out by the cares of this world which are the thorns or the bird comes and swoops it away which is Satan himself. And Satan's not going to come blatantly with horns. He'll send distraction now he can. And I've seen some pretty spooky stuff. I've seen demonic manifestations like demons manifest as a, like physically and it's terrifying um, I'm in the moment I'm like I'm freaking out because I'm like that's a real demon like it's manifesting right in front of me uh, but even then like at that time I now regarding that time I want to say that the demon didn't want to be seen or it was a principality I don't know what it was but it looked human. It had the shape of a triangle. Um, but I, I, after I asked God about it, I felt in my spirit, you know. It didn't want to be seen. But God revealed him to me so that I can see what was going on around me in the spirit realm. All this stuff is real. The spirit realm is real, man. Heaven and hell are, are a true story. It's not fake. It's not a fairy tale. It's not make-believe. It's not somebody that something came up. It's not something that somebody came up with to scare people in, into doing the right thing. It's real. It's a real place. Heaven is a real place. And hell is a real place. And there will be a real judgment day where everybody will be held accountable for everything that they ever said or did in the natural, in this life, in this current life on earth.
And since God is just, He's perfectly just and He's perfectly merciful. Because God loved the world so much. He paid for your way to heaven on that cross. And He rose again. He's the first one. Because after He was the first one, we follow. But we follow whenever He comes back. And just so we can have a preview, if you read, I think it's in the end of Matthew, where after Jesus had died and went to the belly of the earth, people that had died in the moment, that, that had died in the recent years, they were seen walking around. I feel the presence of God so strong right now. Those dead people that had died five, ten years prior to the crucifixion, when Jesus was buried, when He gave up His Spirit, those people that had died five, ten years ago, before Jesus was crucified, they were seen walking around. And people were looking at the people and they're like, hey, didn't this guy die five years ago? Hey, didn't he die? It says it in the book of Matthew. Read it. That's how it's going to be. Holy Spirit, I feel you so strong right now. That's how it's going to be in the end. That's how it's going to be. The people that died, believers that you love, they're going to come back. They're going to come back. That's why God says, in me there's eternal life. And that's for you too. That's not just for anybody special. It's incredible. And you can't fathom it, but you're like, wow, God, that's, that's incredible. It's, it's a comeback. It's the comeback. The comeback. The Bible says that was just a small preview. Oh, man. That's beautiful. The Bible says that that was a small preview of what's to come. That's why they call Jesus the first and the last. Because he's the one that, that guards the entry and he's the one that guards the exit. Alpha and the Omega. The beginning and the end. Life started with him and it's going to end with him. As in like this life. Oh man, man, if you gotta get in with the Holy Spirit, you're missing out. You're missing out. And He wants you. Well, that's how it is almost every day. For me, I get these precious words from God, and I feel them. Right now, you, you just saw me feel God. <laughs> no words. Period. No words. <sighs> Thank you, Lord. Talk to Him. Seek Him out. Seek Him out. He wants to be found. I heard this on, I think, Isaiah Saldivar's podcast. He was saying, God wants you to look for him. So he plays hide and seek with you. But he sticks his foot out because he wants you to find him. It's adorable. And that's the kind of love that he has for us as children. But our own sin makes us perceive God as an enemy. Our own imperfections point out God and saying he's judging you because of your sin when that wasn't ever his original design. His original design was meant to be pure. But as human beings, we're so used to living in sin that it's insulting when somebody says otherwise. When the Creator says, hey, that's not how I intended for you to live. That's not how I intended for life to be. But since you're so used to that lifestyle, that when preaching of the truth comes, you find the truth offensive. Because that's how far we are from perfection. Jesus can make you perfect. And this life is unto perfection. We reach perfection in the next life. But we're being perfected. And we come into agreement with God through Christ. When we come to Christ, we basically say, God, I agree with you on the way that you want things to go. I agree with your will. I agree to disagree with sin. Not on sin. 
disagree with sin. As in, you're not in agreement with sin anymore. That's, that's why God says to repent. Because when we repent, we basically tell God, God, although I might stumble and fall into sin, I don't agree with it. I don't want nothing to do with sin. This sinful man, I'm putting it away in baptism and I'm coming back a new man. The new man. The Bible says to put on the new man. The old self has died. Now the new is alive in Christ. It's a very simple but very profound thing. And I pray the Holy Spirit opens your eyes as you're listening to this. Now, if I were to tell you everything that God's done in my life, man, I would be talking here for hours. Probably all day, probably all week. I'm not going to lie. It says I've given him my life, for real. It's been a journey. And I can't wait for what's to come in the next life because it, this sneak peek is so powerful and it's had a strong impact in my life. I can't, I, I don't know how good it's going to be. Just imagine how amazing it's going to be in the next life with him. Man, no words. No words. This reality is just a paper version of the real thing. This is just a sketch of what's to come. It's a rough draft. You see, whenever I minister, I ask God, I'm like, Lord, what else do you want me to say? That's why I take these pauses because I'm waiting on, on Him. And I'm like, Holy Spirit, this message is not even possible without you. Without the Holy Spirit, <laughs> what am I gonna do? Apart from me, you can do nothing. That's what he said in, in John and in Corinthians. As long as we're connected to the vine, we'll be able to produce fruit. I'm getting kind of thirsty though. Um, also, man, I mean, I feel like to tell you this, you're a minister, and you're like, well, sometimes I, I, uh, my head just fogs up. Kind of like, <laughs> how can I do to me? <laughs> pray in the Spirit, pray in tongues. O se le And if the Holy Spirit wants to keep ministering through you, He'll give you more, uh, He'll put words in your mouth for you to speak. And if you're done, you're done. You know? It's very simple. It's not about being clever with the words. It's not about trying to sound cool it's not about trying to be like how can I wow the crowd you know that's why when Paul wrote the epistles he told them I come not with clever words but with power and demonstration of course also don't get it twisted when Paul said power and demonstration he didn't come with power to as in like how magicians did it back then. You know the people that practice magic and sorcery? They did it to appease people. They did it to get the wow of the crowd. And although Paul was empowered by the Holy Spirit to do miracles, signs and wonders. His motives were, were aligned with the Lord. They were pure motives. They're like I'm not doing this to amaze you. Or to get your attention or to get your like on a post. I'm doing this so that you can see that God is here. Jesus said, whenever you cast out a demon, whenever you do deliverance on somebody, you're establishing the kingdom of God. That's what the power of God is for, to establish His kingdom, not to get a following. Not for likes, not for shares, not for fame. Not to be relevant, not to be talked about, not to be popular. No, you're preaching and you're demonstrating the power of God so that people can repent and come to the Lord and be saved. The world's made a mockery of, savory, of, of, uh, of salvation. They make fun of it all the time. 
And it's gonna to the point where people even think it sounds ridiculous. It's how twisted the enemy got it. <coughs> it's how messed up it's got him. It's become a joke in, in pop culture. It's not a joke, man. Fear God, heaven and hell are true stories. They're for real. And they're not stories, they're reality. Where are you going to go? And you have family that's passed away in the Lord. I've heard of testimonies where that the family that's passed away, that died in the Lord, that died born again, and they died knowing Jesus and accepting Him as Lord and Savior over their lives that their family wait by the gates for the other saved ones that are still on the earth. They wait for you. Abba. They wait for you up there. Just like when you land on a plane and they're waiting for you on the, on the, on the terminal. They're waiting for you up there. The people that have died in Christ. It says in Hebrews that we're surrounded by a cloud of witnesses. Now we don't talk to those witnesses. We really pray to God. But I'm pretty sure they can probably see what's going on but have no... Uh, Probably no audible um, communication, you know, because they don't go to God for us. Only Jesus does. Jesus is the only mediator. We don't pray to dead people. We don't pray to saints. <clears throat> and man, that's pretty. It's insane. Pretty thirsty, so I'm gonna call it. Oh man, gotta go.